everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we are here at the main farm and we are continuing to harvest corn. So we're trying to get the sew bin to roughly 50% full because we want to dry the corn down in it fairly quickly. And by filling it only halfway, we can run air on it and it should dry down pretty fast. And then what we're going to do is transfer the corn from the sew bin over to the suka bin because the suka bin does not have store raters. So we like to use that as just kind of like a storage bin. So we'll set the auger up, transfer the corn over, and then we'll continue to harvest. However, um, we about have the corn in the sew bin to right where we want it, to be able to dry it down quickly. So that leaves us in a state of wondering what we should do. Andrew was just on the phone and he wants to head out to a field of mine and it is entered into the yield contest and there's a certain way you got to go about harvesting it so he wants to go out there and since we're not really pressed for much time you know we got the bin right where we want it and um the beans are still too wet to harvest or anything like that until probably another two days we think so we're thinking we're probably going to head out to that field of mine and harvest it we have to have people sign off on it on the yield um, to verify it so it's a little bit more tedious than just harvesting it like regular so we're gonna head out there and um, probably harvest that that this afternoon once we get the bin right to where we want it so the corn is yielding awesome still um, right now the average is 265 and that's incredible for what I've seen um, we haven't had the yield monitor for too many years but this is the highest we've had yet so it should be a pretty good year
So we actually are unloading on the go here at the main farm. Um, this is the most easy going farm. So if we're gonna be unloading on the go, this is definitely the place to start. Um, there are ditches here, but you just kinda have to be vigilant. You have to keep an eye out for the ditches to make sure that you don't, you aren't unloading when you go through one because the combine auger can really, can really lose some uh, height when the combine goes through one of those ditches and we don't wanna damage anything, so. Having trouble with the 82's electrical system. Um, I keep getting errors saying that the slightest one was wheel speed sensors mismatch. Um, and then there was another one for the parking solenoid fault. So um, we might have someone come out and have a look at the 82. Um, not totally sure how, how or what we can do to fix it. I mean, wheel sensor isn't that big of a deal, but as far as like the parking solenoid, I don't even know where to begin. So they'll probably have to come out and hook hook onto it and see if they can deduce what's wrong. Dad just took the combine back into the buildings, so we are going to go look at that field of mine and just have a look and see what it looks like. So uh, we're having trouble with the combine. Um, pretty much it's pushing grain out, out the back. Um, we don't know whether it's because the fodder is just too damp or what, but it's not. The grain is literally running out the back of the combine like it's overflowing. And um, driving slow isn't doing it, so I might just have to see, go up and see what that looks like, see what the percentage of the moisture is running. Gotta figure out where we're going from here. <laughs> Where did you come from? Where did you go? Marco! Uh, if everybody watches really closely, we're about to see the corn monster come crawling out. <laughs> I hope the right is our farm and the left oh, is Oh, you sent me those. <laughs> Take a guess what brand those are. Pioneer. If I had a field of this, and it was purely just because like the hybrid or whatever else, I'd be murderous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That is the difference between staying in business and going broke. Yeah. Don't go in the corn! Don't go in the corn! <laughs> hey, watch it! You're knocking out a bunch of my corn. If you grow it, they will come. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they don't. Yeah, I checked some corn today. That's 40. That, yeah. yeah. I checked some corn today that I thought would be really dry. And like it felt dry shelling it. Went through the test for 27. Like what the what heck? What variety was that? That was a pine wow. So Andrew, why don't you explain to the viewers of how farms work? What's the importance of black layer? Well, black layer, it's also called the abscission layer. And that's when the plant stops technically transferring um, nutrients into the kernel. So once that happens, there's no flow between the cob and the kernel and you get start the natural dry down process. If you don't hit black layer, you're gonna end up with really light test weight corn. You're not gonna have a whole lot of dry matter in the kernel and the kernels are really gonna shrink. So, so hitting black layer is really important. You know, when we pick maturities in this area, we're growing basically 99 day up to 114 day corn. Uh, depending on how early you can get it planted and how many growing degree days you think you're going to have. So does um, it pay off this year for guys to plant longer maturity corn? Depends on the area, on. probably. Well, okay, so for example, this is 104 day corn and this is going to be one of the highest yielding numbers in the area. Um, 112 day, 113 day corn uh, typically is done well. You've got some 112 day Travis that's doing really well. Um, but you know, you, you look at what you're risking. And if you don't get it planted early enough, you might not hit that black layer. Um, you know, also a lot of the 112 day, we had 112 day here, uh, the last time mm -hmm. it was corn. And that was the last time it was mudded in. And it didn't work out for us that day. Yeah. It was mudded in, but it green snapped really bad too. You mm -hmm. know, it, that, that we put that in here two years ago with the thought of putting in yield contests and we never even did enter it because 
um, you know, the yield wasn't that great on it, but that was a 112 day racehorse type hybrid. And it just, we didn't have the weather circumstances that year to really make it do well. I'm really shocked that we didn't have more wind damage than we've had. This is a relatively tall hybrid, um, medium ear placement on it. Um, the, it's just, it's been running phenomenal. This is a double stack, so it does not have the um, rootworm traits in it. So you don't want to plant it corn on corn. This is not ours. No. You versus the guy she told you not to worry about. Don't worry about <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just challenging. I've been looking at yields for 10 years and still can't accurately guess what the yield's going to be out there. And you can. That's why I gave up. Yeah. Yeah. They say the bucket test is probably the most accurate, where you actually take it in, you know, put the whole cob into a bucket, weigh it. But there's still a lot of variability there. I had uh, an insurance guy did the bucket test on one of my customers' corn that he has now gone out and combined and they were 30 bushel less. Uh, have you ever heard of the, um, to check the moisture in the corn to see if it's ready, throw it in a bucket of water and with two out of five float, float. or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. Crib and corn. Okay. A bit yet. I got this, but there's a little bit of mold. There's a little bit of mold. Look at these ears. Holy crap. Yeah, it's not going to Some, there are some small ones. This is what this is what will make or break yield. And I don't know. That was not bad. That one's obviously a small one. It's got some mold on it. And then you got these just monsters in here. It's all about your average. So this is. So we definitely want to take these because they're a little bit wider. Yeah. Then you got a plant here that was a straggler. It emerged later, kind of like when how we were going to do our flag test a couple years ago. Yeah. So you got one that emerged a little later. It puts that kind of an ear on it. <laughs> this is the middle of the field. Yeah, these are some of the biggest ones I've ever seen out here. So. Holy crap. <laughs> Question is, can these ears, look at that one, can those compensate for the little bit smaller ones like this? Or no, this one right here. Yeah. And that's where, that's where the technology, the hydraulic downforce electric drives all the stuff for planters. Improves consistency. It, yeah, so then all of a sudden you have every ear like this. And then there's no doubt about what you got out there. You know, if you can get get rid of all these ears and make it so every ears like that. Yeah, that's that's how we get these 40 bushel increases. Seems like where there's a lot of mold damage or where they're sticking out of the leaves. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times you get birds that get at it. Yeah. And break those open. Well, it's too wet to. Uh, um, do it today but hopefully here in the next coming weeks we can get out here and actually check to see what the yield's gonna be. We're setting Travis up with the rhino mower he's gonna go out and cut stalks.
putting the bean head on because we're giving up on corn for a few days. Hopefully we can get those beans run through that we tried the other day. Uh, we might try to do something once we get it hooked up. Um, where I'd like to start is over here by the bins and get that cleared up so that we can get in there with the tractors and just set the wagon up and then dump into it with the grain carts instead of moving the wagon around and having to set it up each time. one lap around the soybean field by the bins and it's still pretty wet especially since it was pretty damp last night we're not totally sure how much it rained and um, we didn't get any sunshine today so the beans are gonna be a little bit more high moisture so we're thinking that by tomorrow um, provided that the Sun does come out we should be able to run some beans through but Yep, we're gonna throw the tarp over this and call it quits for today. With that, thanks for watching this video guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to stay tuned as we continue into harvest and uh, put Big Red to good use. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, All How Farms Work. And be sure to leave a comment if you're interested in winning a How Farms Work hat. We are doing a How Farms Work hat giveaway again. Um, I got some more hats in stock, so time to start doing some more giveaways. With that, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Might be able to see that spindle on there has a broken tooth. Um, this gets kind of hard to pry on, and Travis was prying on it and it broke it off. It's happened before. Um, however, Dad found one of these wheels that was on the old Easy Trail that we junked, and he's pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure, that they're interchangeable. So I'm gonna go get some stuff to take those off and it should be a really simple process to replace. It's a Carhartt kind of day. We're wrenching now. Didn't expect to be able to turn the bolt because I could not get it loose before.
mucho gusto. Haven't it?